Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another uh, lecture presentation of the United States Spiritist Federation that uh, happens every Saturday at 11 a.m. Today, we are very pleased and honored to have Dr. Sonia Toy with us. Uh, but uh, before I introduce her, let us uh, do our opening prayer, elevating our thoughts, asking for the blessing and protection of the spiritual benefactors, for their assistance for our work of this morning. We ask them to help us, to guide us, to inspire us, so we can all together learn, understand, and more important, be able to put in practice on our daily lives all the teachings we're about to receive. We thank our Master Jesus for another opportunity of being reunited in his name. With our hearts full of gratitude, we ask permission to start our meeting. So be it. <clears throat> so welcome, Dr. Sonia Doy. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here with us this morning. Let me introduce you. Dr. Sonia Doy is currently occupying the positions of president of the Allan Kardec Spiritist Society of Maryland, U.S. Spiritist Medical Association, and International Spiritist Medical Association. She graduated in medicine by the University of Sao Paulo, Brazil, with specialization in endocrinology and has over 25 years of research mm -hmm. experience in the U.S. And she's a dear friend of all of us here at the United States Spiritist Federation. Welcome, Dr. So Dr. Sonia. Thank you so much. Uh, and it's a great pleasure to be here with all of you this morning. I hope everyone is doing well. And um, so I have prepared something about the perispirit illnesses and, and health. And I would like to share with you we had some technical problems, so bear with me if uh, uh, the presentation gets a little um, uh, broken in the middle. But anyway, so let's talk about a little bit about the, the pair spirit. I think there was one slide before that that talks about, yes, thank you, John. Uh, no, the next one. Um, so this is our outline of uh, how we're going to conduct the talk, talking first about what is their spirit, the constitution of the pair spirit, relationship of the pair spirit with the soul and body, the mental body, the pair spirit and infirmities of the body, which is the basics uh, of this, uh, this talk, and sources of infirmities. So let's see the next one, please. In the next slide, we, we're going to talk a little bit of uh, what is the perispirit. The perispirit is that subtle, fluidic body of the spirit. It's always with the spirit and connects the spirit to the physical body. The soul is united with the body at the conception by, uh, by the perispirit. So the perispirit is the connection. And... and the the uh, only death can break this connection and i put there this is of course in the spirits book uh, i'm quite sure that all of you already know that but i i put there um in black that the spirit comes with the pair spirit when it, it's united to the body and when the body decays and dies the spirit leaves the body with the pair spirit so that keep this in mind. The Paris spirit is always uh, involving the spirit, meaning the spirit is, is the same uh, is correct. The spirit has always this uh, fluidic body. Thank. Next one, please. So <clears throat> the we're talking about this fluidic body of the Paris spirit in. We learn in the book Genesis by Kardec, <coughs> excuse me, that uh, this fluidic body is formed by cosmic fluid. Is the and the cosmic? This is one of the most important products of the cosmic fluid, which condenses around an intelligent focus, which is the spirit. 
So if you read Genesis, there's a whole much, uh, a whole body of information about the cosmic fluid. And in there, it talks about the cosmic fluid being the, the, the material that, uh, that makes the, the perispirit. The physical body also originates from the cosmic fluid. In essence, everything in the material world uh, uh, is formed by cosmic fluid. And the cosmic fluid then condenses in a different way uh, in, the, in the material body than it is in the perispirit. So it's just the elements of the, the cosmic fluid that condenses in a different form, in a different way. The next, please. <clears throat> so although the perispirit and the physical body originate from the same source, the same cosmic fluid, they are of different forms of matter. They aggregate differently. So this is a very important concept. The perispirit is matter. It's formed by the, the very, very uh, fluidic uh, form of the, in the cosmic fluid and elements that aggregate in a very uh, different form than the dense material that we see here in our world. Next one, please. So what is the, again, talking, continuing uh, on the nature of the perispirit, the nature of this fluidic body varies with the degree of moral advance, advancement of the spirit. This is to say <clears throat> that uh, it's not identical for all spirits in the same world, world. So here on earth, we are different spirits at different degrees of advancement, not too much, but a little different. And uh, spirits that are more advanced morally have a um, fluidic body that it's um, less dense than spirits that are in a lower level of uh, evolution. Next, please. So sometimes the fluidic body is so dense that the spirit thinks that, the, the, that they are still alive after discarnation. Uh, it, they feel like that their spirit body is the same as the, as the material body, so dense it is. Next one. The difference from the perispirit uh, and the spiritual uh, and the physical body is that the, the physical body doesn't change according to our state of evolution, spiritual evolution. The perispirit changes, but the physical body is the same, basically the same elements aggregated the same way. Next, please. So here is another very important um, information. The spirit body is not a reflection of the physical body, although it resembles the physical body. It's not the perispirit that reflects the physical body, it's the other way around. It is the physical body that reflects the spiritual body, which in turn portrays the mental body that presides its formation. This is in the book, Evolution into Worlds. And this <clears throat> now is introducing a concept of mental body. So the first part, I think most of you understand because uh, we remember that before we incarnate, our mentors, uh, spiritual mentors help us to design basically our perispirit, which will be the, the, the mode for the, the a physical body that's going to be formed according to whatever is needed for our advancement. But here we learn from Andrew Lewis in, 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 the, in the book Evolution into Worlds that there's also a mental body and that's the, the part of the perispirit that commands everything. So what is the mental body? The mental body is the part that condenses, that contains all the information that the spirit acquires during 
the whole journey uh, in evolution. So everything that we learn, everything that we experience, all memories, everything is kept from incarnation to incarnation in the mental body. And it is the mental body that actually commands the formation of the perispirit and also that will influence the perispirit in our incarnate lives. And, and we're going to see that uh, in the next slides as we go. So, so you see there, a, there is a hierarchy. The, the spirit or the soul, and, and you remember that uh, Kardec tell us that the, the spirits actually tell us uh, in the spirits book that soul and spirit are uh, two word, uh, words for the same concept. And usually we use the word spirit for the discarnate spirits, and we use the word soul when the spirit's incarnated. Next, please. So what is the chain of command? As I showed before, this, this spirit is the source of everything because it's the intelligent part. And then the, the mental body that contains all the information passes that to the, the peri-spirit. And then that part of the mental body makes a connection, is, a, is, is actually what we call mind, and makes a connection with the physical brain. And here you see the pineal gland, the pituitary, and the hypothalamus. All these, these parts of the brain are connected to the mind. And there's a whole thing here, a, a body of information that I, I probably don't have time to go deep into uh, details, but <clears throat> the spirit through the mind passes, transmits the impulses, impulses of thought to the physical brain via per spirit. And possibly this information is passed through a quantic, quantic interaction. Next, please. So, under the command of the mind or the mental body, all cells, tissues, and organs of the physical body are integrated by the nervous system and their, and their functions are controlled by hormones. All this is also, this, are, this information is a condensed information, of course, and it comes from two books, Evolution in Two Worlds, and the other book is not uh, translated to English, so I put the, the name in Portuguese, to be fair, uh, uh, but it, translated would be Between Earth and Heaven, and it's also by Francisco Candido Xavier and Spirit Andrea Luis. So in these two books, the, the information is that the command coming from the spirit, from the thoughts to the mind, passes on to the brain, physical brain, to the nerves, the neural system, and to the hormones and functions about uh, through the hormones. And we're gonna see this in a little more details, but here's a representation of the endocrine system <clears throat> and the several organs. And one of the most important here is the adrenal gland, which is responsible for the stress response. I'm gonna see this later. Next one, please. Okay, so not only the hormones that we know in, more in the endocrine system are active in, in that way, but also a whole network of neurohormones called neuropeptides that actually were, there's a lot of work that um, was done by uh, Dr. Ken Spurt. She has already discarnated, she's in the spirit world. And uh, this, she discovered that these neuropeptides have receptors all over the body so they can interact with several organs in our body and, and, and 
regulate. So depending on our emotions, we are releasing, the brain is releasing some neuropeptides, some of these neuropeptides, and they are going to act directly in, in our organs, in our system. So if our emotions are emotions of happiness, um, joy, there are some neuropeptides that are going to be activated. And if our emotions are bad emotions, sadness, and so forth, so on, they're going to activate another type of neuropeptides. So all this, together with the hormones from the endocrine system, are regulated by the impulses that are coming from our thoughts. Next one. So here is a representation of how this works. The psycho, meaning mind, connecting with neural system, with the endocrine system, activating the glands, which actually now connects with the immune system, which is our defense system. This goes back and forth, uh, activating in a chain of reactions and, and interactions and back. So depending on how we act or react, this cycle is a continuous cycle, permanent, staying there for days, weeks, years, whatever, or we can break the cycle. It, it depends on our thoughts. Next slide, please. So this interaction was discovered by some scientists that gave a long name to a new um, a field of science called psychoneuroendoimmunology. Uh, Next slide, next, uh, yeah. And depending on how we react, we might uh, have an adaptive response and, and then create a healthy status, or we may react in a way that we dysregulate the system and then we have disease. Next slide, please. So we're talking about the endocrine system acting on the immune system. And now more than ever, I think everybody's learning about the immune system because of COVID-19. And, and this is very important because depending on how we are reacting, we may improve the response of our uh, immune system, or we may actually make uh, uh, our system incapable of uh, reacting against invaders like the virus that's going around. But also the immune system is not only protecting us from bacteria and viruses, but it's also protecting, protecting us from development of cancer. So if you see on the next click, here um, is, is a representation of a a cancer cell, which is the gray cell there, and the green cells, which are immune cells, kind of trying to attack, trying to control these cancer cells. So think of it, our emotions, our thoughts can regulate the system for good or for bad. So if we have a positive attitude, we are every day, commanding our immune system to fight against the development of cancer because our cells have that uh, instinctive type of, um, uh, of, of, of development. But if we are in a uh, dysfunctional mental state, we might block this defense system. And that's where we have more chances, more risks of developing cancer. Next, please. So let's talk a, lot, a little bit about sentiment and thought. And let's read this, this paragraph from, again, Evolution in Two Worlds, because it, it has very important information there. The particle of thought which is produced by the spirit, although alive and powerful, is passive, 
before the sentiment gives it form and nature for good or for evil. First important information there. Andrea Louise is talking about the particle of thought. So we all think of thought as a like a vibration, an energy, but he says particle of thought. And we're going to see this a little bit later, but think about the concept of energy and matter, the concept of quantum physics, and that's how thought behaves, okay? Uh, sometimes just as a vibration, but it can act as a form, and we're going to see the consequences of that. So while the, the uh, thought is passive, it is passive before we have a sentiment that gives it form. That's the material part of it in nature for good or for evil. So let's say I think about a person. This is just a thought. Soon after, I, I have a sentiment about that person. I love the person. So that creates, gives the thought a, a form, a good form. But if I don't like the person, if I have um, a bad sentiment about that person, I'm creating a thought that has the evil nature. Okay, next, click. So our thoughts, animated by our sentiments, modulate how our organism acts and reacts. Next. In the book, Missionaries of the Light, uh, the instructor talking to Andra Luis, instru instructor Ale Alexandria Alexander, says, the sick body almost always indicates a sick mind. Next click. So what is he saying this? The mind is the one that generates thoughts and sentiments that directly modulates the function of the vital centers of the pair spirit, which then are reflected on the physical body. So the physical body is a reflection of what's going on in the mind. That's what he's saying there. The sick body always, almost always indicates a sick mind. Next. So illnesses can only be completely understood if we take in consideration the functions of the per spirit, its dynamic and constant interactions with the physical body and with the spirit, its vital centers, its role in the organization and, and support of physical life. So all this we're gonna see in the next slides. So conventional medicine still does not have the resources to capture the existence and the functions of the per spirit. So we're hoping that in, in the near future, we medicine develops that ability. So we can see since the disease is already incubating in the per spirit, uh, if we had the resources, we could probably make a diagnosis earlier. Next slide. So here are a representation of the vital centers that uh, some people called energy centers, power centers, or chakra. And the per spirit is governed by seven vital centers, which branch into plexus and vibrate in harmony which, uh, with each other through the controlling power of the mind. So it's the mind that controls all these vital centers. Next click. So the perispirit is a vehicle of electric cells, which we can define as an electromagnetic field in which thought vibrates in a closed circuit. 
This is in, again in the book um, in Portuguese, um, Between uh, uh, Earth and Heaven. And here's the representation of the seven vital centers, crowns, cerebral, laryngeal, cardiac, gastric, splenic, and genetic. So the perispirit is, is the vehicle for all the vibrations that runs from all these vital centers. Next one. So the perispirit establishes the interaction with the physical body under the command of these vital centers. Because remember that the vital centers are in the perispirit, but they make connections with the neural system. And the neural system is in the physical body. So that's how they relate. That's how they um, send the information from the perispirit to the physical body. The crown center, which is the top one, expresses the forces received from the incarnate spirit, from the spiritual realm, and the cosmic fluid. That's a very important information also. First of all, the crown center is the, it is the commander of all the other centers, okay? It's the one that's directly in connection with the spirit, with thoughts that receive the thoughts of the spirit. And as it says there, is this crown center in the perispirit that perceives not only the, the emanations, the, the thoughts of the incarnate spirit, but also from the spiritual realm, meaning any other spirit, good or bad, are going to communicate with us, are going to, to share their thoughts through the crown center and the pineal gland, which we're not going to talk about today. Also, the crown center is in the connection with the cosmic fluid. That's why passes are applied up there in the crown center. The cosmic fluid is basically, it, it, it's more uh, um, perceived and, and received through the crown center, and then it disperses through the whole body. And, and that's how we can uh, re, uh, we can feed ourselves from the cosmic fluid. Next, click. So, so the crown center is the first one that receives all this all these um, uh, thoughts and energy, and then transfers them all to all other centers, and through the organic plexus to the nerves, thereby moving this energy through the entire physical body. So that's how good or bad the energy comes and is distributed to the whole body. Next, please. So here's an information from Dr. Jorge Andrea. The book's also only in Portuguese, not translated yet. It's called Enfoque Scientificus na Doutrina Espírita. Uh, he, he was a uh, medical doctor and, and uh, spiritist that works, uh, wrote several books, very interesting books. And, and in this book, he says that before manifesting in the physical body, illnesses have already affected the perispirit and alter the function of the vital centers. So it's there already. Next, please. And as the illness, uh, illness is already um, implanted, let's say, or developing in the, in the perispirit, not yet manifested, it shows signs of it in the aura before it's detected in the physical body. So for those who can see aura, they can see the signs of disease 
they might be able even to make a diagnosis. Uh, it's very interesting. Um, I read uh, once in a book um, uh, talking about uh, uh, Edgar Casey, and there was a story that once a lady comes with her sick uh, son and knocks on uh, doctor uh, on Edgar Casey's uh, door, asking him because uh, you know he had already that um, people knew him for his uh, abilities mediumship abilities and and she comes with his uh, with her son asking for his help and he didn't want to do anything but he looks at the boy and he says he has and i don't remember now the disease pneumonia or something like this but he was able probably there i think to two possibilities he probably could see the aura of the child and see what the disease was through the pair spirit, or he was informed by another spirit who could see the aura, you know, the pair spirit already, uh, the disease in the pair spirit of this child. So the aura is a projection of the pair spirit, it shows. And many people have heard about auras, and, and aura can change depending on our state of mind, right? So uh, let's see the next one. So this is how the spirits working in the realm of cure can diagnose and work on healing according with the merit of each person. So when we have um, spiritual healing, spiritual cure, this is how the spirits, the benefactor spirits who are working on that, they look, they see through our pair spirit, what is wrong, what is affected, and they might be able to work on that. And of course, all this depends on the merit of each one. Next, please. But it, it, you just think, imagine when, when uh, medicine can, can actually look and, and see the pair spirit and detect all that, how fast we can act. So um, this is uh, the, the source of this information is a book that is also not translated. It's in Portuguese, it's called Perispirito. It's a whole, it's a, it's a big book uh, by Almino Zimmerman. And it, he uh, divides the sources of infirmities uh, basically in four types atonement or karma, uh, non vigilance of mental state, psychological tensions um, that actually reflect stress, external influences uh, that is um, reflected by our surrounding psychosphere. So let's see each one of them. Next, please. <clears throat> atonement. Atonement, also known as karma, is a process governed by the law of cause and effect. I think we, we know that, you know, when we learn spiritism, we learn so much about the law of cause and effect. So, so that's where we bring to the current life, current incarnation, the memory, the effect of what we have done in the past. So the sentiment of guilt, remorse, when no action is taken to alleviate the hidden pain of repentance, can create in the mind uh, an anomalous state that the spirit Andrea Louise in, in the book Evolution in Two Worlds calls area of remorse, around which our thoughts circulate in a closed circuit and reflecting on the spiritual area associated with these memories. So in this area called area of remorse in the, in the pair spirit, we create um, it, the, the source that if it's continuous, it will end up in being associated with the area of the physical body 
um, where these memories are coming from. Say um, you have a you carry a guilt of damaging your body because of uh, ab alcohol abuse, and that is created a disease in the liver, or you say you did something to your body um, that, for example, suicide, um, hurting the brain or hurting the heart, and that is going to be associated with a region in the perispirit corresponding to that area in the body. And that remorse, that sense of guilt, that was not, as Andrea Luis poses it, is not alleviated by an action to uh, of repentance. You you know, as you repent, repent, you might find ways to deal with that. You might find ways to uh, help or find solutions that alleviate that pain. But sometimes that is there, hidden, and it creates an area called area of remorse. Um, so there are reincar uh, the reincarnations with morbid predispositions. So this is, is something that comes imprinted in our perispirit. And as we develop the physical body, it's going to show the predisposition for some diseases, or it's going to be manifested by a congenital disease. So that is a, a if if this process is prolonged, it may be prolonged through several reincarnations. Or, depending on our act, it may be shortened if we follow um, the, the moral teachings of Jesus, for example. So it's not a fate. It's not something that is there and we can never change. Yet yeah, it's there, but we may be able to change. Okay, next one. So this is a, a very interesting um, information. Infirmity of the physical body is in general a process of cure of the soul. As the, the, the disease is manifested from the perispirit into the physical body, it's almost like a liberation. It's almost like a cleansing. It is actually a cleansing from what was affecting the perispirit. So um, Andra Luis in the book Enter Terra You Sell tell us the physical body is not only a divine receptacle, uh, receptacle for the growth of our capabilities, but also is a kind of miraculous call, absorbing the toxic waste and, and shadows we bring from, um, from past lives to the material body. So it's a cleansing mechanism. Next. The second uh, way that we can uh, affect the spirit is by non-vigilance. Non-vigilance of mental state by aggressive thoughts, vengeance, uncontrolled emotions, and uh, all ill, bad sentiments. In the book Genesis, Kardec explains that thoughts generate fluidic images. Remember of the, the thoughts being also matter? That thoughts generate fluidic images that are reflected in the perispiritual body as in a mirror and create a form as in a photograph, which is called thought forms, forma pensamento in Portuguese, thought forms. Pro um, this is also projected in an aura and it can be perceived by others around us or you know, seen or perceived by vi uh, vibratory ways um, and, and also impact ourselves. Next. Other, uh, the other uh, way that, that um, our thoughts impact our spirit is by psychological tensions, basically stress, right? Perturbations of the mind that causes dysfunction of the vital centers of the spirit. 
and that result in psychological disturbances as well in an imbalance of the neuroendocrine system and the immune system. So all sorts of psychological tensions that we let stay in our mind, the longer it stays there, the more damage it will do. And here I just put two examples of uh, scientific articles showing that depression, for example, the first one, there's a relationship between depression and coronary disease. There's also um, scientific evidence of uh, bipolar depression with type two diabetes. So next one, please. Surrounding influences. This is um, important for us to keep in mind. The energy around us will affect our minds and well-being the same way that images, sounds, noise, odors do. So everything in our environment, everything can impact our perispirit. Vibrations emitted by others in the surrounding area will be sensed by our perispirit and will affect our state of mind. So people that are not vibrating good energy will affect us. And we can see this. Uh, if you go into an environment of people who uh, have uh, bad attitudes, bad thoughts, we are going to feel that we call it a heavy, this is a heavy environment, heavy vibrations. And uh, next click. In the opposite is, is true too. If we are surrounded by harmonious vibrations, we will feel relaxed and healthy and happy. So uh, de depending on where we are, uh, those vibrations are not good for us, are not uh, um, impacting our perspective in a good way. So better look for a good environment. Next, please. Can we change? So almost all infirmities, even those that are, appear to be fortuitous, that happens uh, randomly or incidentally, are directly or indirectly related to the individual way of thinking and acting in the past or in the present. So it's not only attitudes from the past, but the present. But can we change? Science has also shown, and, and Andrea Louise preceded what science de uh, demonstrated, that genetic program can be changed by good or bad behavior. Mental state projected on um, biophores or units of psychosomatic force in the cytoplasm of the cell can change the program of the cell. So think about it. We can change things. If we are having um, a disease or something that is affecting our body, our thoughts, our attitudes will act through the perispirit on those organic cells and might change the way, the behavior of that cell. Next, please. So overall, all physical or mental infirmities are opportunities of spiritual growth. Next, we can confront pain and serious illnesses without suffering. If we understand the divine laws, if we study and understand, and if we exercise resignation. Many times the infirmity manifested in the physical body is the process of elimination of deep, serious wounds from the soul, is the way that we cleanse, is a cleansing mechanism. Infirmities, infirmities help us to purify our soul, our spirit, is a mechanism, is a cleansing mechanism provided by the, the divine that we can use through several incarnations. Or if we learn fast, we can actually shorten that. But through this process, every time we can, every incarnation, we can improve, we can cleanse our very spirit 
until we actually come to be a pure spirit. And when that happens, next slide, please. When that happens, we'll have a bright, beautiful pure spirit, absolutely clean and pure as Jesus. Until then, let's keep working. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sonia. Uh, wonderful presentation. So many things come to our mind here. So many questions. I, I saw in the comments that someone, um, Marcia Bennett, already suggested that uh, we have a meeting with you to talk about, to go into more details, uh, talk about the pineal gland. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure that uh, we, we can schedule something because really there is a lot to learn more on this topic and it's always a fascinating topic right so um thank you all um we have some questions we have time for some questions okay okay it's just i i just want to say that uh, there's so much information most of this coming of course kardec makes the introduction to all of the the concepts that are, are most important for us to understand but then andra luis uh, the books of andra luis brings a lot of information that are very very important most of it is in the evolution into worlds and then um you know we if we as we put all this together is a huge volume of information as you said yeah, I uh, uh, just a uh, 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 side comment here. Between heaven and earth, it's translated. It's, it's translated into English. You you can find. Oh, it. is it? Oh, yeah, yes. It's oh, a great my, book. Between... My my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't heaven follow. And earth. I yeah. didn't follow with the translations. Okay. Good. Actually, all the all the books from uh, from Andrea Luis's Life in the Spiritual World are translated into English now. The the fifteen books. So. Oh, that's fantastic! Great. I didn't get yeah. with the translations. Thank yeah. you. So um, let's go to the questions. Um, I understand you said the peri spirit varies with the degree of moral advancement of spirits. Can you give an example of how this is evidenced here on Earth? <laughs> we don't see that. We are talking about peri spirit, right? How the peri spirit varies, and we cannot basically. See have uh, have evidence here on earth unless we are able to see the peri spirit of one person or another so this comes as as uh, information from the spirit world and uh, we have to just uh, um, believe and understand or for those who can see the the peri spirit might see but there are teen tenuous differences what um uh, kardec's talking about this is in in the book genesis and and he's talking about the the way the elements form the peri spirit he there's a lot of information also in the medium's book about the peri spirit and what they say is that the example is that on earth the peri spirit is formed with the elements that are present in this planet if you go to another planet the peri spirit there is formed in a different uh, with different elements it's the same cosmic fluid but they are kind of aggregated in a different way in other worlds here on earth this might be uh, the difference might be that uh, the person that is more morally more evolved has, has a pair of spirit that is lighter, that is more subtle than others. So as you pass into the, the spirit world, as we live here, the, uh, the, the transition is a little easier because the pair of spirit is more subtle, more developed. Thanks. Um, another one here from our friend Daniel Santos, from a scientist to, to another scientist. <laughs> Thank you, so, Dr. Sonia. In your opinion, what will be the difference between the perispirit and the Akashic Records belief? Meaning, Akashic Records is a compendium of all universal elements, thoughts, words, emotions, and intent ever to have occurred in the past, present, or future, for those who didn't know what the Akashic Record means. 
Well, I cannot even comment on this because I don't have uh, knowledge to 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 make a comment of, of the Akashic records, uh, Daniel. I'll, I'll learn with you later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so another one here. Can you talk a little more about how the infirmities are a cleansing mechanism provided by the divine, by our, by our friend Elenir Bernatis? Hi, Elenir. Uh, yes. Um, as as we this is this is a very complex, but as we learned, the thoughts uh, that are uh, that are brought created by the spirit depends pretty much on the involvement, on the degree of evolution of that spirit. So if that spirit is uh, not very evolved, has created evil thoughts and um, low inferior types of attitudes, this spirit will uh, create a, as, as, um, uh, Carde, uh, as Andrea Louise says, a form, a thought form that impacts the pair spirit and that will transmit to the body. Is, as we, become sick whether this is a an atonement from past lives or created from this life through we are suffering in the body the body is suffering the spirit feels the pain the spirit is learning through that experience the the effect of the cause so once we experience the pain, experience suffering, and know what is the cause. It's almost like, oh, now I understand. I don't need to keep this in my prayer spirit. As I understand, as I act in a good way, and that's a big difference. The cleansing works when we resign, when we accept almost like accept the suffering. We, we are not revolted. We are not um, blaspheming against God for that disease. So that makes us better, makes us understanding, makes us understand the pain of others. Say we are, we are now atoning something that I did to others, not that I did to my own body, but I did to others. And now I, that guilt, that remorse is creating like an ulcer in my spirit, which, which then um, is transmitted as a disease to the body. We, in our um, uh, uh, present incarnation, we may not be able to complete make sense of that, but as a spirit, when we are the kind of detached from the body, we have a better understanding. We understand that this uh, suffering is an effect of that specific deed, whatever I did in the, in the past or I did previously. As we understand this uh, process, we are liberating. We are um pardoning we are um what i would say i think i'm missing the word here um we 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 let ourselves um i, I cannot think about the, uh, the, the it doesn't come the word now but we are forgiving ourselves, okay? As we forgive ourselves, that uh, part of the Paris spirit that was creating a, a, a wound is coming out. It's almost like it's a process where the, the problem is transferred from the Paris spirit to the body 
And as the body goes, the perispirit doesn't have that anymore. It's almost like that. But it, it, it needs the spirit to realize where that pain is coming from. It, it needs the, the spirit to resign and not to be not to be revolting against that. It needs the spirit to forgive itself. Okay, so that's how we cleanse. We get rid of of that process of that uh, yeah. thing. I think the subject could be a, a talk in itself, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so from our friend Bob O, sentiment gives a particle of thought a form. Love gives gives it a good form. Thinking of Valentine's Day tomorrow, happy Valentine's Day <laughs> for everyone. How can we help a friend struggling with physical illness? Hi, Bob. Good to see you here. So happy Valentine's to everyone too. But how can we help? Um, uh, friends struggling. And, and this is a, another point. When somebody is suffering, it's not only atonement for the person who is going through that process. It's an opportunity that divine gives to people around to exercise love, to exercise char charity. So we can always help in so many ways, not only uh, the the physical way, but mostly giving support to the person. First of all, talking to the person, um, trying to bring them light, trying to help them not to feel guilty, trying to help them to go inside themselves and find out what is actually there inside the person or ourselves many times we cannot make a connection if you think about oh i have this disease why do i have this disease and you go and you, you cannot usually make that connection oh i did this in the past that's why i have diabetes that's not the way it works because thank god we forget what we have done in the past but through examining ourselves we see our faults we see the uh, what is what we are not doing actually according to the divine laws and through that we can kind of perceive if i'm not doing this right probably i was not even doing this I was doing this even worse in the past. So maybe it's related to that. It doesn't matter what is related to. Every time we try to improve ourselves, we try to work in accordance to the divine laws, we are improving ourselves. There is no doubt about it. So by talking to our friends, trying to give them peace, trying to uh, help them think, about themselves and how they can improve themselves uh, and give them support saying, I'm always here. Um, it's always a good thing. It's always a way to help. They yeah. might have others, but. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's always a challenge, right? But uh, yeah. So from RK, then can we heal ourselves by changing our thoughts and acts, maybe through meditation? Absolutely. We can always, always help ourselves. Um, and that's when healing comes from. The word healing doesn't exist in Portuguese. It's hard to translate into Portuguese, but it, it, it's very helpful in English. Cure is when you cure a body, you know, the, the disease by surgery, by medication, whatever. The disease apparently disappeared many times. If you did not work in the soul, in the very spirit, in the thoughts, in the mind, the disease is still there and will reappear. And this concept is not only in the spirit's books, but it's also in a scientific compendium of in integrative medicine. 
many times the disease um, apparently disappeared, is apparently cured, but inside we are still sick. And that is going to show again with the same disease or another way. So how can we heal ourselves? There are many, many different ways. Meditation is one way and there are several uh, uh, scientific paper showing that meditation can uh, help in in uh, improving health, in improving uh, even the treatment, response to treatment in cancer, in some other diseases. So meditation is one, and there's uh, prayer, passes, all that. There's so many ways, but keep in mind that always starts with our will to improve ourselves. There's no other way. Thank you. So, a long one here. You explained <laughs> that everything is connected, thoughts, feelings, emotions. You also mentioned specifically that there is a connection between emo emotions and neuroptids. Can you explain further how the neuroptids work with our emotions and how they impact our ability to stay healthy? That's another, is another treaty, it's huge. Um, these neuropeptides, are, uh, neuropeptides, they are, they are like little um, proteins, part, uh, pieces of proteins that are produced in the brain and they circulate through the blood to the body. So there are several of them. I would not even dare to say all the names because it won't help us here. What is important is depending on our emotions, our feelings, we are triggering one type of neuro, one class, let's say, of neuropeptides or another class of neuropeptides. They are uh, say you are very happy and you are releasing some of these happy neuropeptides, they go through our bloodstream and they, they uh, connect with cells because they have receptors. So they connect with cells in our body and they act through several different ways, mechanisms, biological mechanisms to make that cell work. So <clears throat> if we are releasing if we're having good emotions, releasing good neuropeptides, our cells are working in balance, are working productively. The other way around, if we have uh, bad emotions, if we are sad, depre depressed, whatever, the, neuro the classes of neuropeptides that are going to be released are different. And they will impact not only the whole body, they all impact the brain itself. So that's where we can have mental disorders. And if you have a um, tendency or uh, propensity for a certain disease, so you have propensity to diabetes, but you're not diabetic, as you start releasing those uh, having those bad emotions, releasing those neuropeptides related to bad emotions, they are going to impact cells. They are going to release other hormones from the endocrine system. And they are going to then trigger diseases like diabetes. So I think many people have uh, who have diabetes remember uh, the, the, the people who have diabetes after a very stressful situation. For example, a person that um, had a, a huge um, emotional problem, family problem, after that, they develop diabetes or after a big impact, for example, an accident, whatever, they develop diabetes. So that's the, the, the stress, that's the emotions involved in, in that moment, in that um, experience that triggered the disease. Okay, thanks, Dr. Sonia. Very interesting, a lot of 
things we still have to learn and study, right? <laughs> <laughs> so from Daniel Santos again, what is the relationship between the homeopathic and allopathic treatment in regard to the perispirit? Hi, Daniel. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to enter an area that uh, has a lot of discussion. Well, allopathic medicine, I think everybody knows, is just a medication that we take. Uh, let me make a, a little um, comment here before I go on. When we are talking all about this, about disease and everything, some people may think that oh, we are against medication. No, we are not against medication. Medication is needed for the body. Okay. But if we don't heal the spirit, the very spirit, if we don't work there, the body will get disease again. That the same or another one. So yeah, medication is there, but we need to work in our spiritual realm too. So getting back to homeopathic medicine, there's a lot of controversy there. There's even, uh, and I'm not even talking about uh, the spiritists, but uh, physicians, uh, especially the allopathic physicians are completely against, they don't believe in homeopathy. But what I learned, and this is you know, not that I have a huge knowledge on homeopathy, but what I learned, is that, and, and once I heard this from uh, Dr. Goswami, uh, he, he gave a very good concept. What I learned is that homeopathy is, is, is um, the extract of some plants. There are diluted sequentially millions of times. Every time this is diluted, is diluted in water. So the, the essence, of that plant is now in a almost indetectable way. It's say one molecule in a liter of water. And how can you explain that that molecule is going to do something to your body? But we have evidence. There's so many people who were cured or were, uh, you know, got better with homeopathic medicine. So something happens, right? And um, there are papers showing that, uh, no, it's not just the um, placebo effect, but it is the homeopathy medication that is actually helping. So Dr. Kaswami, when he was talking about this, he said, remember that by every dilution, they take the extract and shake, 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 shake with the water and then dilute again, shake, shake, shake. Every time there's a shaking, shaking, shaking. Every time you shake that, the properties of the plant, the extract, are mixing with the water. And that influences or changes the properties of the water. And then what you take at the end is actually the molecules of water that have been changed. So let's think a little bit about our fluided water that we receive the, the vibrations of the spirit world into the water. Think about all the experiences of Dr. Emoto with the water. So I think it would be the same. These molecules absorbed by the body, and, and that goes one part that I didn't touch much uh, during my talk, but now I have an opportunity to say, it's not only the perispirit that acts over the physical body. The physical body also reacts and affects the perispirit. So in this way, the molecules that are absorbed from these mm, homeopathic medications or fluidic water will affect our body and will then kind of respond, shared response with the perispirit. The same thing, if I could uh, just uh, one second say, is, is the, uh, how acupuncture works. 
acupuncture works on the meridians, which are kind of related to the what we call vital um, vital uh, centers or chakras. And so that's actually apparently is working through our body because the, the, the needles are, you know, stuck in our physical body. But in essence, they are activating points in the third spirit, third spiritual body. Okay, thank you. So fascinating. And uh, I see by the comments here that people are really enjoying uh, this conversation. Okay. So uh, we have one last question here. Uh, so infirmities result from our thoughts as they are activated by our feelings and emotions. But infirmities also offer a cleansing mechanism to our sick soul. Can you help us better understand the paradox of this statement? <laughs> okay. So again, this, as I said, is complex. So the thoughts, feelings, let's talk about, think about the spirit. The spirit is, is who created the thoughts and who have the emotions. That is what actually goes through the spirit to our body and makes our body sick. How is that a mechanism of cleansing? is what I was explaining before. As we do this process, as this process happens, if, our, if we have awareness, if the spirit is aware of the process, if our attitude is, a, is an attitude of resignation, is an attitude of understanding, we are helping for the per spirit to get rid of that source of disease to that source, that what, what um, uh, Andrea Luis calls area of remorse. So our thought, bad thoughts, our bad emotions from this incarnation or from previous incarnations that are now created in the per spirit and reflect in the body, depending on our attitude against it, will work as a cleansing mechanism. But if we are re revolting, if we are not resigned, if we are um, not accepting this, what, what, uh, what is our attitude? We get even more um, depressed. We get ang angry. We revolt against God. Why am I sick? Why God is sending this to me? We, if we don't understand the mechanism, we have all these reactions against it. We are not, that's not cleansing. That's not working. That's not going to liberate, to help the per spirit to get rid of it. So it depends on how we go through the experience. Either we accept the experience and we make a good use of this experience, or if we don't make a good use, we have to come back again and again and again until we are able to understand. Uh, just a, a few examples, and I see this very often. I see on TV, for example, athletes, uh, the parent athletes, who have uh, no limbs and all this, and they are happy, they are competing, doing things. So those are souls that didn't care about it. So in the next incarnation, like Devaldo says, they cannot walk now, they will walk in the spirit world. They will walk, they, they're, they're, they're recovering for the next incarnation. For this incarnation, sometimes you see a person who has cancer, say, and the person learns that there's no cure. So there's two, there are two attitudes. Once you are revolted, you are um, sad, depressed, blah, blah, blah. The medication doesn't work well. The disease gets worse and worse and worse. The other attitude is, okay, I have a disease, I'm gonna do the best I can, I'm gonna take all the medications I can, but I'm also going to work 
to do the best I can for my soul. And I see so many people that say, okay, I have cancer, but I'm going to work now. I'm going to create a, an association for cancer. I'm going to help others. I'm going to work in charity. And there are several um, uh, scientific papers showing that charity helps. Charity improves health, improves mental state. So everything depends on how we react. If we react in a, in a positive way, that is how we are working together with the cleansing mechanism so that the, for the next incarnation, our parent spirit's not carrying that anymore. We have already done, we are done with it. But if we revolt, we are creating maybe a bigger problem. Thanks. Okay, we have one light question here. I hope you can answer this one. Could you please explain from Gregory Bennett? Could you please explain the significance of the neurons in the gut? <laughs> Hi, Gregory. Um, neurons in the gut, yeah. There's a lot of new papers coming, I think, through the last five, seven years or so, uh, talking about this, uh, this um, topic. There are neurons there that uh, not only are sensors, but they, they also release peptides that connect with the, the brain. And they, they work in so many different ways. Uh, I don't want to extend myself, but there are peptides that, that sense the amount of food that we eat, the type of food that we eat, and then they help in releasing hormones uh, for digestion and this and that. So there are interactions between these neurosensors in the gut and so many other different parts of the body. So it, it's just, uh, you know, how the body interacts, all the parts of the body are interactive. If you have a disease in one place, that disease is affecting, say you have an ulcer in the foot, uh, but still whatever is there is acting and in, 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 in going through the whole body and affecting other organs and affecting our state of mind. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Sonia. Um, we, I think we, we, it's our time. So once again, thank you for the a wonderful presentation, so much knowledge that you brought to us. As uh, Kirsten said earlier, we have to rewatch this, this lecture to learn more and to, to study it again, because there is a lot of information there. We really appreciate. Uh, we want to invite everyone to come back next week next saturday at 11 a.m we are going to have our friend alvaro mordecai from brazil he's going to talk about the importance of paul's letters in current days for those that have seen alvaro before here with us he has been with us a couple of times you know him you know you know that he brings all the the knowledge from the jewish uh traditions and uh he he's jewish and uh he was raised in the Jewish belief and the Jewish tradition, and he's a a scholar in in uh, in uh, in the in bringing the Jewish uh, knowledge to Spiritism. So you're all invo invited for next week, 11 a.m. The importance of Paul's letters in current days. Uh, and to to end our talk, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Sonia Doy to do our final prayer. Yeah, uh, before, I just want to thank you all for the opportunity to share. Um, as we do this, we are always learning. It's always a good opportunity for us also to learn. So thank you. Thank you all to have, uh, who have been uh, watching this. Thank you. So at this moment, with our hearts full of gratitude, to the mentors, to the spiritual benefactors that were here with us. We thank our divine 
creator for giving us all these opportunities through incarnations to perfect ourselves, to give us the knowledge through our Master Jesus and all the benefactor spirits who bring us information that help us to think, help us to learn, help us to realign ourselves with the divine laws so that we can have a productive path in evolution. Let's also ask our mentors, our Master Jesus, to always help us, bless us, so that we are strong to confront the challenges, the infirmities that, trip that comes to us during the incarnation experience, so that in the future we can be a better soul, a better spirit. Help us, God, and help our brothers and sisters around the world. And so be it. Thank you all. See you next week.